So are we actually going? I don't know, man. You just say go. Okay, ready? Wait. Oh. Oh, okay, no. Now, now go. Ready? Go. Oh, boom. Sound well, effect. Insert here. Welcome back <laughs> to the well, OPNS. Welcome back indeed. Let's see, where are I, we? May I feel 26? like we need, Yeah, I feel I like mean, we need to welcome each other back more than anything because as much as our uh, listener has not had anything, we've done absolutely nothing. Indeed. Uh, I have been in a bed, haven't moved, barely blinked, didn't eat for how long now? Six weeks? Seven? I don't know, because technically we this might be a double header podcast because we still technically have an episode we recorded and have not released yet. Well, <laughs> about that. Is did that we lose? The, did we lose that? <laughs> no, I, I'm sure it's there. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we 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 did try. We got something done, and then it was lost to um, the annals of Danny. Mm, yes, that's where it is. Hey, found it. <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know if your head was far enough up for you to see for a while. <laughs> well, you know, once you turn the lights on in there, it opens up a whole new world. Oh, wow. That goes right back to that conversation we had before the podcast. Yeah, the one we couldn't have about Aladdin because neither of us saw it. Yeah, well, I know someone who saw it, so... Oh yeah. I don't I don't know what they thought about it though. Like oh, I said. Okay. Well, now we still have that conversation. <laughs> I fell asleep, man. Okay. Like, well, during the movie already not seeing it? No. No, no. I fell asleep while they were seeing it. Oh. I was hoping to say before the movie and then I'd be like, "Oh, you fell asleep before the movie. It must have been really bad." During the during the podcast absence. Uh, I've been doing a lot of hiking and kayaking, uh, like a lot, a lot. And yesterday was eight miles in and eight miles out hike. And by the time I got home, I was exhausted and a little bit sunburned and I fell asleep at like six, six, seven thirty. That sounds exactly like my day yesterday. That was not your day yesterday. It was too. Hold on. We're going to re 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 rewind. Eight mile hike, sunburn, exhausted. No, eight miles in, eight miles out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my day yesterday it was eight miles in and around, sunburned, exhausted, Disney World, and then drive home all night. It's basically like we had the same day and just missed each other on the way. Yes, b basically. Um, where'd you go? Was there mountains in yours? <laughs> there were a lot of mountains. Oh, were wow. there real mountains in yours? Space Mountain. <laughs> uh, probably another one. Oh, yeah, totally. Pandora, Air Mountains. Which is really fucking cool. In fact, on video so game, did you note, hike up to the top of it? Yeah, you have to. I don't believe. Oh, me. and Everest. Oh yeah, we rode the train up to the top of Everest. See, man, oh, man, yeah. You rough. would think there would be a lot less casualties at the top of Everest if you can just ride the train up and down. Uh, spoiler alert: There's a Yeti up there, so that's why I think there's a oh, lot of shit. casualties. Dude, speaking of Everest, on the real Everest, apparently there's so much congestion up near the top that people are dying because they have to wait so long. Yeah, this is like, you're like 10 years past. This has been happening forever. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, Everest is a terrible place. It's just a bunch of millionaires paying Sherpas to carry their gear, and then they keep walking as long as they can until they peter out and... 
Dude, those, those fucking down. Sherpas are legit, though. They do all that shit with very little gear and just... Oh, yeah. No, the Sherpas are the real heroes. I mean, I'm sure Everest is a tough thing to do, but it's like it's basically Disney World for millionaires now. Do you have any interest in ever climbing Everest? I No, Neverest. I'm a Neverest. <laughs> Hashtag you know, Neverest. Huh? Uh, did you ever see the movie ever? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. I've seen a lot of movies well, it was, about Everest. It was pretty good, but it, it totally confirmed it for me. I have zero interest ever in climbing Everest. Like, if that's one of the things I never do with my life, that's fine. I can still live a great and fulfilled life never having experienced that. Well, see... I wouldn't climb Everest for the exact reason you brought up is I don't like the worst part about Disneyland is the fucking line. So if I'm going to have to do that shit to go to a mountain. Yeah. No way. Not happening. But K2. Yeah. K2. I'd be down. I'd be down for K2. Yeah. I'd be down to go to like Patagonia and climb around down there. I'd be down to climb a lot of mountains. Everest is not one that I really care about. Yeah, I mean, first it would require a hell of a lot of training, and uh, I've been at sea level now for three years, and (laughs) I'd probably have to adjust slightly. (laughs) I haven't climbed a mountain in a long time, so (laughs) yeah, uh, that's that's never going to happen. Do you think if uh, you went and climbed, like, because we're both going back to Utah at points during the summer, uh, do you think if you were to go and climb like Timpanogos or something, you'd have a hard time after being in Florida for so long? Oh yeah. I think if I went and climbed three, maybe four flights of stairs, I'd have a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's higher than anything <laughs> out here by far. So you're not, you're not leading a very active life then? <laughs> Oh, no, I'm definitely active. I, uh, you know, we play some soccer and all that, but, like, the air is so thin up there. It's rough. rough oh, man. so it's not just if you climbed, like, three flights of stairs in Florida. If you went to Utah and climbed three flights of stairs. Well, we have elevators here, so. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> the, the place where elevators exist. I've always <laughs> wanted to go there. Look, all the apartments I ever lived at in Utah had stairs, and it was a pain in the butt to get stuff up and down. So, so, dude, I work on the 26th floor of my building. Yeesh. And one of my buddies at work is like, you're really fit. How come you don't take the stairs? Like, I don't feel like being in a sweaty fucking pool all day just by going up one time in the morning. There's no way. I'm not doing that. Do you have showers up on the 26th floor? No. Well, then, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a Neverest. Hashtag never climb in those 26 flights of stairs. No. We had to go down them during a fire drill one day. And um, they were, as we got closer to the bottom, it was backed up for like four flights. And I was like, you fuckers are the reason it takes me two hours to get to work every day. Because you can't navigate simple bullshit like this. Get the fuck out of the building. Let's go. (laughs) Oh, no, a door. And then as soon as I step through, uh, I'm outside, I'll stop. I totally uh, forgot I've been in line for the last 20 minutes. (laughs) And seriously, it was like 20 or 30 minutes of just waiting near the bottom for these people to figure out how to open said door and how to move past the opening. It was ridiculous. Anyway, sorry, that was a tirade. I didn't mean to get off on that. That's all right. I went off on one last night about, uh, I don't know, you know what? I'm going to keep it a secret because I'm going to make a documentary on this particular subject, and I'll only tease it by giving you the title. You ready? Ready to go. Yep. The title is... One fucking turtle. Did you have a turtle bite your wiener? No, no. Oh, okay. I was going to say, dude, you're not supposed to molester the turtles. 
that's not that's cool. only the title till I figure cool. out what's actually happening. But uh, you know, as as in true documentary form, I'm not making it to prove a point. I'm making it to investigate something. So it may, it's a working title. It may change. Okay. But uh, I'll let you know more as it so, as the progress never uh, continues. So outside of hiking around Disney yesterday, what have you been up to recently? Yeah, more. Have you uh, played any games? Yes, one game. What two did games. you play? One game. Uh, Wait, two that, games. There's, it's two <laughs> or one. <laughs> well, it's kind of both. You don't kind of play a game. So, I played uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. It took me a minute to remember the name of it. Uh huh. Uh, free game. The free game we got. Yeah. Yeah, and in fact, one that I already owned on Xbox, so I've you know played around. So basically, Spike and I just played around until we had enough points to buy parachutes, and then we went uh, base jumping off of things, and it is a blast. I love playing around in that game in a way that you could never do in Division 2. Well, what if they just added parachutes to Division well, is there anywhere you can even think of jumping off? Like, well, I guess they have those. I mean, there's a lot of buildings. And yeah, yeah, but you can only get up certain ones, and then the ones that have windows to the outside have cables already. Well, then just be able not to use the cable and parachute instead. Yeah, I mean, it's not <laughs> a bad idea, but I just don't you, feel like it has. You don't the, see it happening. No, no, like being the open world of downtown, wherever the fuck. Um, DC. DC, yeah, there you go, see? So huge downtown area or whatever just pales in, to compare, in comparison to... Uh, okay, so you played Ghost Recon Wildlands. Yeah. And what and, was the other game you kind of played? Well, I... And explain to me how you kind of played this game. It counts that I turned it on. But okay. I turned on PUBG for the first time in a long time. And? That's it. That's it. End <laughs> of story. I turned it on. I never played it. I left it on. You didn't I, I, actually play a game at all? No. I turned it on, uh, and I think I left it on for maybe two hours. It was just yeah, I was going to say it was a couple hours because... I've got this Steam mobile app, and that's how I usually talk with my uncle. And so I kept, you know, getting in to chat with him, and I'd see you on. So I figured you were playing for two hours. Oh, yeah. I was uh, really going at it. Uh, I went through the menu real quick and then walked away. And mm. I want to, though. So, you know, after we're done with this, maybe we can uh, I was going to say, we can, go, we can go PUBG some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. But, uh, um, yeah, that's about it. After that, free and clear. Well, that's, that's, man, for a gaming podcast, we have a lot to say. Well. Uh, <laughs> because I have played no games. Oh, my I, um You were supposed to be holding this one-legged train up. Dude, I, look. The reference that doesn't work, by the way, but carry on. I've been, I've had a lot of family over and in town. And when all of them attach their devices to my Wi-Fi, it's not the best. And it's certainly not the easiest. And then on top of that, it's been really nice outside. So I've been hiking and I've been kayaking and working out. And games kind of took, uh, took a seat. That's In all I could say. That's a, seat, that's a, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a backseat bitch. All right. Oh, should well, I say that? That's good because guess what? What? You and I both live in places that get really hot in the months of June, July, and August, and going outside is uh, is a danger. I highly recommend not going outside. I uh, yeah. Well, I mean that doesn't really stop me, but all right. Uh, yeah, I mean. You and I, we love the outdoors, so we're going to go out. But yeah. Plus, what I'm getting at is there might June be. June and July is fine for kayaking. 
Oh, yeah. Why, well, and I live on the water. So, you know what? I'm going to spend all my summer outside. I'm okay, only well, recommending people don't go outside so they don't fuck it up for me. This is, this yeah, is well, a purely selfish move. I, I agree. But, yes, we maybe we can get in some gaming. And I think that we have a plan a little bit, as good as our plans ever go, to do these uh, podcasts on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, I, right off the Minus top. Minus your trip. <laughs> well, all right, we're only uh, over the course of the next six Sundays, uh, we're going to hit 50%. That's, uh, that's our. <laughs> that's 50% more than we've been doing, though, yeah. the last little bit. Oh, I don't, yeah, that's 100% more uh, times four or 400, 600%. What? Numbers. <laughs> Big ones. <laughs> Monthlies. Monthly. Look at our. <laughs> so. Quarterlies. Yeah, we probably have a quarter now. Oh, boy. I got a question for you. Hit me. And I wanted to I wanted to save this for this like I should have done with everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, but did you watch the final season of Game of Thrones? I did. Did you hate everything about it like everybody seems to. I did not. What did you and did you not like? Okay. Uh, I I realize that's a big question. (laughs) So just open up the box and go. Well, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do like a nice tight summary of I kind of rode the the little roller coaster of wow, nothing happened in this first episode. It was just a bunch of people getting together. Ah, okay, that's fine. I'm all right with it. And then something happened in the second episode, I'm assuming. I don't remember because in the third episode was the big battle at Winterfell, which I definitely had problems with. Um in my own mind, I was like, "Jesus, what a like tarot anyway tons of i had problems with it but i was like eh, it was still enjoyable and then something happened in the fourth and fifth episode i don't really remember um but i remember kind of writing the train of like oh, you wow, don't remember really... the fifth episode <laughs> i do i know what happened oh but god I, I like my in my mind i was riding this train of wow it feels like they kind of took this timeline that was supposed to be stretched out and just crunched it. And, uh, you know, are we going to like hashtag spoiler this? Cause I'm here, about- here's here. Yes. Yeah, spoilers coming. Um, here's a question I have, right? Because right there, I feel like this is a contradiction. A lot of game of Thrones fans have because they're like, Oh, first two episodes, just slow, nothing happened. And then, bam, they did something. And they're like, well, it, the whole season was rushed. But you just said that the first two episodes were just set up and them doing nothing and getting ready. Like, did you just want them to extend two more seasons? Because then you'd get a whole bunch more of that. Yeah, no, that's where I'm going. That's exactly where I'm going. So, like, like that crunched timeline and of you know, Daenerys's descent into madness that felt kind of crunched after the last episode, I walked away totally satisfied and like, you know what? If I had to like go back and, and try and tell that story, it's probably a really long, boring fucking story of a descent into madness. Like that's why they call it a descent and not like a jump off the cliff into madness. Like it's so it's slow. That's the worst part of hiking is coming back down the mountain. (laughs) Like I, I, so I, you know, that aside, I walked away satisfied and like, yep, I love it. I'm, I'm on board. I, I enjoyed it. That's it. I enjoyed it. And I accept all of the, the roller coaster ride in between, which was half the fun. That's the whole point. You, you watch the show to ride the roller coaster. If you already know where it ends, which I guess this roller coaster uh, metaphor kind of falls apart because you end where you get off. <laughs> uh but you get the you get the idea. Like if you if you know where it was going the whole time, it's like, oh I'll just watch it to see how they get there. Like uh something, there's a little bit of mystery, you know? Something that kind of bugs me, right? And I don't know. I, it's not how I wanted to see things happen either, but at the same time it 
it's a criticism that bugs me, right? It's like one of the big ones is uh, obviously Danny's uh, going insane and just roasting the shit out of a whole city. Or, um, you know, just kind of how Jamie and Cersei died. And people wanted, like, more poetic, like, endings to all of these and more uh, what they felt like justice being done to these. And it's like, how fucking often does that actually happen in life? Like, how often does, like, everything that, uh, you know, may be connected to your past, like, really play out? And, like, people get just fucking hit by cars all of a sudden all the time or, like... I read a story about some lady who was walking down uh, the street in Chicago and a brick fell off of a building and smashed her in the head and killed her. And it's like, well, was that the poetic storyline everyone envisioned for her life? Fuck no. Like, it, that was that happens, man. Cersei? No, it wasn't. And I felt really bad for this lady. No, she I, okay, yeah, I'll joke. Like, a coal totally and everything. But yeah. it's like, th- th- this whole, like, loop and clean endings and uh you know giving you this sense of fulfillment just doesn't happen all the time and so i i don't know i i i would like to see it a lot too but uh you know at the same time that's that's not always how it works out i feel like you know the big points um were all given by george and they all played out roughly the same as they're going to end up in the books and if you don't like how certain things went or ended, like, well, fuck you. You just probably don't like how life goes all the time either. Yeah, no, dude, uh, like, spot on. I'm I'm all about the, the madness and the, you know, not clean dude, endings what? and not poetic everything. Like, if... What if, dictator if, if, just, like, has a very good and compelling story into you know complete madness and uh genocide like is has there ever been a book that you've read about an actual living dictator where you're like wow you know i can really see their descent and sympathize with that and that's a really compelling story or is it like holy shit dude you just decided that you're gonna send an entire people in chain or trains into gas chambers (laughs) like yeah, it does, yeah. it's not a clean story no matter and a lot of times it's you know kind of a split decision and you're in a position of power and you make it i uh, i think if this season has taught me nothing and it probably has i don't know taught learned i don't know uh i would say I've learned, or reaffirmed, reaffirmed is the right word. I'm trying to piece it together here, but like uh, I've reaffirmed that people are just fucking stupid. I hate people. Whoa. Sometimes, like my- Like all people or? You no, know, like as as a general term. I Individuals, I think there's, I think I could probably connect and have a good time, a good conversation and smile with just about every individual on whatever side of whatever thing we're talking about and whatever side I am on whatever thing we're talking about. I think I could connect with any individual um, and at least share a laugh or, uh, you know, maybe a cry or whatever. (laughs) But, like, as a whole, I fucking hate people. Like, (laughs) all this petition crap and, like, oh, and everyone's freaking (laughs) out about, like, a fucking dog they didn't pet, all that stuff. It's like, oh, my God, like, what the fuck are we doing? Uh, that stuff just bothered me. I was like, man, people as a whole group are dumb. Individuals I like. I'm not you know what's funny, like though, is that... People. I'm saying as people, individuals are good, but as people, group the, the group of us, we're all idiots. I mean, I'm probably everyone, in there as well. So I, I was going to say, everyone says that people are stupid, but I mean, by definition, not everyone can actually be stupid because there has to be, you know, a reference of intelligence. So not everyone can actually be stupid. Not everyone can be as intelligent as they all seem to think and then like to call everyone else stupid. So I think people are more 
in the middle ground. But I think that, uh, yeah, definitely the <laughs> idea of like, we're just going to remake the whole last season, sign our petition, and oh, Ghost didn't get pet by John. <laughs> yeah, get oh, the uh, fuck out of here. Get out of here with that crap. <laughs> Like, yeah, I mean, hell, I, I feel stupid just trying to explain my position there and not being able to get it out in an intelligible <laughs> manner. So, like, I'm totally fine with being part of the group of stupid people. <laughs> but, again, if me and you were talking and talking about it, we could have a good time. If we disagreed, we could still have a good time. I think that, uh, you know, I think that this is this is also something I think is happening a lot more, um, is that with the Internet, and the ability to like share theories and to come up with uh, really good stories. Because you look at some of the theories and the stories that people were making up for how the season would go or should go or anything like that, it becomes really easy to make a arguably better story than what uh, you know the show writers were able to do, and. But then it sets a, you know, it sets an expectation. It creates a community that uh, kind of bands around this uh, theory or story and has the expectation for it to go like that. And then when somebody else who actually has creative control over it does something that doesn't fall in line with all your YouTube theory videos and your Reddit posts of, uh, you know, storyboards that you bounce off of each other when it doesn't go that way then suddenly everyone's disappointed and i don't i don't know that that's necessarily like the showmaker's fault um or the people's fault necessarily but that's kind of the paradox that you end up in well, yeah everyone just wants it their way and obviously you know their way is the best way uh, everybody falls subject to that, right? Like, oh, I have this idea, and it's I don't. Than... <laughs> okay, yeah, my everyone... way is very rarely, <laughs> if ever, the best way. <laughs> on that, yeah, well, on that same note, I saw a shirt that I loved. There's tons of good shirts at Disney. That's half the fun is looking at all the shirts. But one of my favorite shirts was from a guy that uh, said, uh, "The people who think they know everything just piss those of us off that really do." <laughs> It's like, yeah, exactly. Everyone's got better ideas and, you know, I have better ideas in some cases and you have better ideas and everyone's got these things like, oh, this would have been better if they, if the Battle of Winterfell, if they just would have used the dragons this way, that would have been better. Like, right. well, right. yeah, sure. Like, uh, and, you know, you want to go and analyze every battle that's ever happened. Every general could have did better and. Uh, you know, and if we want to get real morbid about it, you know, families could still be uh, enjoying the people that, that got lost during those battles. Like, there's better ways to do shit all the time. But the way that it happens is the way that it happens. And yeah, if, if you're okay agreed. with it, then you're okay 100%. with it. Yeah. Um, you know what would have been really funny? If C had got that T-shirt, and then you got a T-shirt that just said, "I think I know everything." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh man, that would. I think good. that'd be really funny. That would have been good. I know I like that that, that had shirt. nothing to do with the topic, but outside I like of, that. I like that shirt a lot. Okay, so you've played no games. I've played no games, but we have watched Game of Thrones, and we have watched Game of Thrones, and. Uh, <laughs> And you know we've done some outdoors stuff, and uh, yeah, and that's and you've been, been working. Oh yeah, Mucho I've been Marco. working, and that's it. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry we have not done more of this. Yeah, I don't know. I know that you know at least three people are like, oh shit, why, why haven't they put out our podcast? We're we're really invested in this, and there's only three of us, and. I, they're probably going to start a petition to make us redo like six weeks of non podcasts, actually. So yeah. it'll get three signatures. And then to redo the actual episode that we did after they're disappointed and they're like, oh, six weeks of waiting and all you <laughs> gave us was garbage. You weren't even like planning something in the meantime and putting Jeez. together this really cool plan. Uh, yeah, no. They're, no. no, they're going to be so mad. We're gonna have a total HBO meltdown on our hands. Yeah, oh, right. people. Okay, speaking of HBO, 
You know it's really good on HBO right now. Well, you better tell me something because I'm about to cancel that membership along with 40 million other people. Chernobyl is really good. How good? Chernobyl really good. is like fantastic. It it is so well acted. Uh, obviously, you know we kind of know the story, but you don't really know kind of the ins and outs of how everything happened and what did, went down after. Like, dude, the fucking people who helped, um, you know, keep that from actually being a global and um uh you know at very least regional uh catastrophe are fucking heroes and it's no it's not really talked about but it is unbelievable what they had to do to contain that thing and to ensure that uh that shit didn't just at very least destroyed the whole ecosystem for that entire region of the planet it's it's unreal man you got to watch that all right i'm excited to i'm excited to check it out while i while my membership still remains intact with hbo um, well you got other stuff coming on hbo too like yeah the go ahead go Looks good watchmen the yeah. movie it's been out forever not the movie the series they're doing oh, on it okay all right. Well, um, I mean, uh, yeah, look, I'm not. I'm not. Watchmen I'm looks good. They're going to be doing all the Game of Thrones prequels and offshoots, and hopefully, yeah. we get a tormenting ghost like spinoff. Wow. Okay. In, they, they're they're still in like. Have they even started filming yet in these prequels? Yeah the the prequel uh, is called Blood Moon as of right now. And that's already yes, Blood Moon Rising. Okay. Um, and it is scheduled to debut next year, okay. and it has start it has started shooting. Um, okay. and I don't know I don't know about the other three, but I know that one. So look, you you got other stuff coming up, and Chernobyl's worth the watch. Well, here's what I'll ask you about Chernobyl because uh-huh. I, I have not researched nor have I seen it. And you uh, are talking about like oh all the things that they had to do and all this stuff. Is that what I understand? And this is again not based on my own research. It's just on whatever else. I'm I'm pretty far removed from knowing much about Chernobyl. But I think that's the whole point. Is wasn't there a big cover up campaign by Russia to try and? not let information about what happened there get out like i know there's yeah all sorts of books so, and everything and the numbers of people dead are disputed everywhere with some people like there's a new book out that was talking about how the deaths were way low like way way low like two people died in in the actual chernobyl thing uh event and then obviously people after that um from yeah from the yeah but so like, so I don't so, know what the deal is. Uh, if it, is this portrayed like a crazy thing? I, I mean, obviously I'll have to watch to find out. And then I, I'm always interested in the difference between what actually happened and the and the way that we tell the history and want it to be remembered from. I'm assuming an American perspective on this side, and yeah, probably some other interests at, at play as well. So, um, it it does it deals with the whole um, attempting to cover it up, uh, and it actually explains the science behind why uh, that cover up was impossible. You know, like um, you have labs and uh, places in various countries that are constantly monitoring uh radiation levels around the country and all of that and you know it, ex- it it explains you know well when wind patterns and everything took a hold of the radiation uh from this place like you just can't cover that up so Sub- suddenly uh everyone who's downwind is affected by massive nuclear fallout uh <laughs> you kind of are um forced to say yeah well guess what happened here 
Uh, so it it does it it covers the whole attempted cover up, but it doesn't you know it doesn't make it out like uh, it was um, like a massive explosion that had hundreds of thousands of casualties because it just didn't. Uh, when the and I don't feel like this is spoilers because it's fucking history, people. Like because it's whatever. <laughs> it's it's years been years. around for forty years, so. Um, but uh, yeah, there were like two guys who were actually uh in the blast radius and died because of it um they didn't even think that that type of nuclear reactor could explode like for a long time they doubted that it was an actual nuclear explosion because nobody thought and all the scientists confirmed that that type of reactor just couldn't explode it wasn't possible for it to have happened and then uh they do some research and they Dude, I've done a lot of research since watching this about how radiation uh, affects the body, and it is it is brutal, man. And they showed these guys who have to go into uh, Chernobyl, like into the waterways underneath the plant, because if they don't get down there, then uh, the core right is called the elephant's foot, um, and it's like still burning right now uh but one of the big problems that they were going to have was that that core was and still is deteriorating and going down through the various levels underneath the plant and underneath is a bunch of uh, water lines and mains and stuff to fuel uh water up to the actual reactor and keep it cool well as the as the core is basically melting down into the water, what they were scared of was that it was going to create so much steam and so much pressure that it would actually explode again with uh, the force of like, I think they said it was something like 30 Hiroshima bombs worth of energy. And then inevitably it would also get down into the groundwater and all of that water uh, goes to over 30 million people at the time in the area. And so a lot of it is like how they stopped it and everything. Um, but these guys had to go down and shut off the water so that it wasn't continuing. And they ended up with a ton of radioact radioactive exposure. And it's at a certain point, your body is just like your DNA is being shredded on a molecular level and your body is just deteriorating to the point where they can't even administer morphine to you. So you're just being torn apart and you have to deal with it and feel it all. It's pretty brutal, man. Hmm. Delicious. <laughs> I know. So note. <laughs> It's not. It's not yeah, a happy not. Okay. okay, so here. Okay, now here's my next question then on based on that. Um, and I'm going to try and frame this a certain way, but do you think that it ha that this show and watching this show has affected how you feel about nuclear power? Uh, no, not at all. Um, do you, I don't know. I, I, want, I want you to keep. I want you to keep answering the, that question. But also, do you think that it will, for not necessarily yourself, but it will have that kind of effect on certain people, mm. or is it totally more just of a historical? Like, basically, what I'm asking is, do you think is there kind an agenda, of an agenda it? behind it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, well. Um, I mean, it 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 might. The the thing that they do a pretty good job about showing and explaining uh, is the fact that these so-called engineers um, who were overseeing, you know, the plant and um, the, what happened was they were conducting conducting like a stress test at the time, um, and the whole thing exploded because of this. Um, but they, you know show that these engineers, and I say this in air quotes, 
uh, were woefully underskilled. They weren't really scientists. They weren't even at an age where uh, they probably could have gone through the required training uh, to have an understanding of what was going on with the plant. And um, yeah, I, it, it doesn't change it for me because if anything, it you know, to me shows that okay, well, this is why you, you can't put underskilled, and this is why you need to make a investment into uh, the younger generation and minds of people, so that when they're in charge of the nuclear facilities and we're all shitting our pants, that uh, you know the whole thing doesn't explode and go to hell. But uh, it might it might change it for some people. I don't know. I I still think obviously now we have more efficient and better ways of renewable uh, technology. Um, well, but do we though? I think because I feel like nuclear is kind of the way forward. Well, I and I still think that nuclear is like uh, I, that. I don't disagree with. I think that a lot of times we tend to forget about it and how much power it can actually provide and give because we have all these other sources of renewable that uh, are pumped up in the media and whatnot. But truthfully, that's you know one of the best, most efficient, and cleanest, even though there is you know a lot of debris and whatnot that you have to deal with after. But uh, I don't know. It might change some people's. It didn't change mine. And the show's still going on. It's only three episodes in. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So sweet. Yeah. All right. Well, then I'll, I'll definitely check it out. I just, uh, I'm always interested in in the messaging of certain shows and advertisement. I mean, understanding how much money is involved in, in different yes. advertising campaigns and different campaigns to for whatever else. Like it's interesting to see what kind of things because people are molded by media. That's that's the reality of the world we live in. Like for for instance, every time I say nuclear, I have to think, is it nuclear or nuclear because of Homer Simpson? I've been molded by that media <laughs> to think that <laughs> nuclear is okay to say. <laughs> but well, it's not. so did uh, so did our most recent Bush presidency. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as far as I can tell, and uh, as so far in the season, it genuinely just seems to be this is as close to uh, what actually happened as our understanding and access to uh, information and piecing together what we have could be. And these are the players involved and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, it sounds, like, it sounds like a show that's right up my alley. It is. It'll be right up your alley. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you've been there. Oh, so many times. <laughs> I just love going up your alley. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so we're, we'll, we'll try and do better. I don't even know how we got on Chernobyl, but we'll try and do. Yeah, it's we'll good, get. Uh, listen, we don't have gaming content for you, uh, for this one today, but that's okay because it's kind of like a, a reuniting and catching up. Uh, and in catching up, we learned a little bit about another good show to watch now that we're all out of the one good show everyone cares about. Oh, really quick. Who wins, Toronto or Golden State? I mean, I hope Toronto. Based purely, uh, so in my line of work, I watch a lot of videos from a lot of different teams and all of the content that they put out. And Toronto, Golden State obviously does a good job with, you know, they have a lot of money and resources and things like that. And they, they've put out some pretty good content. Um, for their end game and for promotional things. And for me, it's really interesting for other people that aren't golden state fans. They're probably like, hmm, boring next. <laughs> and part of me thinks that too, but, uh, Toronto at the beginning of the season, before the season started, in fact, before, right before the home opener, um, they put out a video that I loved messaging wise. It was nothing crazy visually or, uh, you know, graphically or anything like that. 
but the storytelling and the writing of this video, I thought it was bang on. It was on the money. It was saying what all of the fans basically were thinking. And, uh, and I love it. And, uh, maybe we'll, let's see, you know what? I'm, we're here. I'm bringing it up, bringing it up right now. So I can tell you what it's called. So you can check it out. Uh, so you want Toronto to win because they produced a movie at the beginning of the season. Uh, that's what it sounded like. Um, <laughs> because that's where my brain went. Um, but no, I want Toronto to win because I'd, I prefer Toronto to win. And then my brain was like, oh, man. And they totally put out this cool video at the beginning of the season. And this would totally wrap that video up in a nice story. And as we all learned in the final episode, it's all about good stories. Yes, that's true. See, I tied that shit together. thought I was off the rails. But I wasn't. I was on the train, um, baby. I, so you fall into the... 99% of people that you just not like 40 minutes ago called stupid uh, who want uh, Toronto to win. Um, so yeah, you have a I, lot more in common than you think you do. Yeah, um, I already told you, I'm on the train. If I'm on the train, that means I'm on the thing with all the people. And, uh, and I think all the people are stupid. So here I be amongst <laughs> ye. <laughs> Here I be amongst ye. I'm with you. If ever get merch, that'll be a shirt. Idiots of the world, (laughs) I'm here with you. All right? Like, I'm with you. Dude, I kind of. That's fine. I can accept that. I kind of want to. I kind of want to see Golden State win it and do it without KD and just have him be like, well, fine. I guess I wasn't needed. Everyone <laughs> hates me now. Yeah, all right. So you kind of want that for <laughs> one particular reason, but who do you really want? I mean, I I do want... I, I want to see Toronto do it. I, I'm actually kind of surprised that they haven't uh, made it to a finals. You think of all those, like, Vince Carter years and stuff. Like, those were, those were pretty good teams. And I... <laughs> I don't know. They they seem to be you know they were they started out as the Vancouver Grizzlies and now they're the Toronto Raptors. But they always have had support. It's not like uh, the fans have ever really gone away. So I, I wouldn't mind seeing them seeing them do it. But I don't really care. I just whatever invokes the most chaos, I'm down for. And I, I think like that uh, the Warriors winning it without KD being able to play a single game would totally just be like. Fine. <laughs> Temper again, tantrum. Again, the reason you want a team is for the story. <laughs> and this story is a story <laughs> of KD <laughs> of not KD. contributing. <laughs> but it's yeah, still exactly. the story, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I right. mean, we love a good story. I just don't I'm not gonna throw a hissy fit when Toronto wins. Oh yeah, I mean in the end I don't care. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna sign a petition to make him redo the finals. <laughs> Play seven more games. Oh, you see what I did there? I just took them to seven. I like we're not gonna get a sweep here. I just took them to seven in my history. We're um, getting the gentleman sweep. Well, yeah, since I don't care, I want them to play seven games. I Golden want... State in five. Oh, okay. Toronto in six. No way, Rohan. No way. Here's a here's a, here's the other thing I think might happen. Okay, KD doesn't play game one. Golden State loses it, and then KD comes back, and they sweep out the rest. And he's like, "See, you guys really needed me for a championship. You guys all, all underestimate me and how much I bring to this team. And everyone says it's great without me. But look, we weren't gonna win until I came back, and so now we won, and I'm staying in Golden State." Oh man! And then all those players that used to play for Oklahoma City. We're just going to be like, ah, <laughs> we had KD at one point. You know who's really going to say that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Seattle. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the whole city. Womp, womp. Poor, poor Seattle. They never should have lost their team. Okay. All right. Well, is that good? Are we done? Yeah, I like it. We ended on a good supersonic slam. <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all. We'll talk to you next week. Peace.